Welcome to learnwordpress.org and the online workshop on dashboard and documentation, where to find the answer. Okay, so our objectives for this workshop are pretty simple. Um, to navigate the dashboard, feel more confident with navigating the dashboard uh, because it is overwhelming, especially when I first started, I was like, oh, dang, like, what is all this stuff over here? <laughs> and do I need to know how to use it all? So luckily, no because I did start uh, and design my own website and got it live and I didn't know half of it. So um, testament to, you only need to know at least the basics, right? Um, learn about the updated documentation. Uh, so uh, there's a great, WordPress has uh, really upped their game on, um, wordpress.org has upped their game on their documentation for, what all the different things in the dashboard are. So it's, um, I really like that. Uh, feel more confident with finding answers, what each block does, where to report a problem and the forums. Oops. So I'm gonna go back because these are my notes <laughs> um, just to have on the side so that I make sure that I'm going through. But Here's my site and here's my dashboard. I need to make this a little smaller. All right, so our dashboard and what we're gonna go through first is I'm gonna make it a little bit, we're gonna focus on, this is called the administration screen. And it's made up of your toolbar at the top, the main navigation on the side, and then your work area within here. Pretty simple. So we're gonna look at the toolbar first, okay? And if we hover over the icon, you can see that there is a menu that pops up. Uh, so we have several different things. So we're gonna kind of look through that. And these resources you're gonna see in, a several, in several different places. So uh, that's the nice thing that the information is right here. You don't have to like save um, book, bookmark pages anymore and kind of things you can kind of, you know, if you're here, you can find the answer right from here. So um, our first one we're gonna click on is the about WordPress. And this is a new a newer feature from 6.4. Uh, what they did was they created a, a page that has what's new. And this is nice because it tells you about the different versions and releases. And you can click on the documentation to find out what those notes are about. So if you if you end up like having a problem with a plugin or something, you can kind of go back and maybe troubleshoot or you know kind of point out different things. Uh, so the nice thing was, is that it, we also released 2024 when we uh, had the 6.4 and it kind of goes through the, an overview of the different uh, highlighted uh, features that were focused on for that. So it's a nice, nice documentation um, about that. Okay. Uh, also within this uh, page, you have uh, the credits. So everyone who worked on 6.4 and from there on, uh, if you're new to WordPress and you don't know about the four freedoms of open source, then please go ahead and read that page. Uh, privacy, so fo uh, some information about that and then get involved. So this is about because wordpress.org is an open source project it is um, kind of run by volunteers. Now, some people that are part of it, they do get sponsored by their company. So they might work part-time, do some hours for their, their company and then some hours for here. Some, some it's their full-time job to work on this project, depending on what company it is. Uh, so these are the different resources. You'll see this a, a bunch of times because we'd really like you to get involved. There's 
20 plus teams uh, that you can be a part of. So if you're like a writer or if you're a translator, you know, a different language, um, like I'm on the training team. So we do all the uh, online workshops, tutorials, courses, things like that. Um, but like, if you like to, to look at, at, at the, uh, at the <laughs> tutorials, we need reviewers. We need script writers. So like if somebody could write the script for me and find all the information, then I could present it kind of thing um, within that. But if you're a coder, there is the core. Um, so there's marketing, uh, all kinds of different things. The TV, uh, the YouTube, you know, taking care of the YouTube channel. So lots of different places to get involved. And I'll mention this a lot because uh, we're always looking for new people uh, because I know that, you know, people's jobs take them away and, and we can't, can't always volunteer and stuff like that. And sometimes you have like your good months and your bad months kind of thing, but um, it's always great to at least volunteer a little bit. So it's a good, good thing. Great community. Um, so yeah, so the second thing is just a direct link to the get involved um, that goes right to that page. We hover over again, we have the wordpress.org. Okay, so this is gonna take you to the homepage of wordpress.org. And if you're new to the um, WordPress community, there is a difference between wordpress.com and wordpress.org. So in simple terms, and there's all kinds of videos out there to explain it a little bit more in depth. WordPress.com is a, um, for for profit company, they have products that they design that they make in order to make money. WordPress.com is a place where a lot of people who are bloggers uh, will host their site uh, and then uh, use those tools for that. WordPress.com is, or I'm sorry, WordPress.org is like I said, the an open source project. So it was started by the same person who uh, runs company Automatic um, and he wanted to have these tools accessible to everyone. So that's why it's called a project because then um, there aren't anything that's paid. So there's mostly free tools in on this format. All right. But if you need more information, go ahead and Google the difference between .com and .org so that you understand the difference when talking to your clients and just for your own, own self. Okay. All right. So this has a lot of different information. I'm not going to go through it all. Here is where um, I'm located in the Learn Workshop. So uh, this has all kinds of great information about our tutorials and workshops and uh, courses. We are gonna be um, host, uh, launching a learning pathways uh, this summer. So we're super excited. We've been pulling together and making different categories, pathways for users, designers, and then developers. And within each of those, there are a beginner intermediate and advanced. So this is a great way that you'll be able to kind of um, go at a, at a nicer, a, a slow pace, but then kind of, we're trying to put them in the right order so that they kind of flow together good. Um, and we have some great people that are in charge of that. So all right, let me go back here to the dashboard. And we have next our documentation. So this is one of the new, the new pages. And I'm super excited about this because the fact that it needs to be out there, right? We need to be able to find information without having to go and like ask people all the time. Uh, Cause I think a lot of times, you know, you're always, I'm kind of scared that you're like, oh, it's a dumb question, right? So this gives you the power. <laughs> The power to find it yourself um, and easily too. Cause a lot of times websites, uh, especially like the government website, you know, like the DMV, it's like hidden what documentation you need to bring to the 
DMV to renew your license, you know, it's like, why can't that just be right in front? So um, this is very organized, very simple, okay? Um, it has a couple of different headings right here, but then those headings are also within the page itself. Um, so I'm gonna focus right here on this dashboard one to get to know the control center. So when I click on that, oops, Oh, I, hold on, let me mess up my pages. Okay. So when we click on the dashboard, it gives us all the different categories of what the screen is. Okay. Oh, this one's a little bit different. Hold on. Let me get back here. Okay. Wow. Um, and we'll kind of go through this a little bit, but I want to point out if you still have a classic editor or classic theme that uses widgets and the customizer, there is still information here. If you have a um, block-based widget or block-based theme that came out around version 5.8, there's information here for you. So it breaks it down into the different sections um, very nicely, which is nice, okay? All right, our next thing is support. Uh, so if we've gone through the documentation, still can't find it, It the problem has to do with the core, um, not with a plugin or not with a, a theme. It has to do with just kind of the layouts, the blocks, um, the sizing and stuff like that. Then come here and please go ahead and read the get started so that you understand what questions you can ask. So like I said, a plugin is usually uh, developed by a third party. So they're gonna have their own support. And so that's why you go into the plugin page, you go, it says at the bottom, you know, support for that particular plugin. Um, but again, here's the documentation, uh, get involved. <laughs> I really want you to get involved. Um, and then a couple of different highlighted uh, forms that are specific. So installing WordPress, you know, fixing, uh, so you can always check there first and do a search of your problem so that you can find the information, okay? And then the last one in this area is feedback. So uh, request and feedback is not that you have a problem, but well, kind of that you have a problem, but not that you want to find the fix. The find the fix is when you go to support. Request and feedback is how can we make it better? Is there something that you might have seen somewhere else or that some, some step is frustrating you? How could we make it better, right? And that's where you would leave a request. You know, can you do this? Could we do this, okay? And those are the way, you know, that's why we do these different versions is because then we take those things, we test them out in a plugin, and then we bring them into the main core of a theme so that they're easier to use. Um, so that's what that is for, okay? So I'm gonna stop there since we've gone through a whole bunch of things. Are there any questions, June? I don't see any question, but um, okay. if anybody has some, please drop it in the chat. Awesome. All right, we're going to continue on the toolbar. So the next is our little house, and that means that this is our site. So my site name is uh, WordPress Basics. Okay, there is a drop down that says to visit the site. And what that will do is take it to the front end. And I like to do a right click and open in a new tab so that I ha still have my dashboard as a tab. And I have to move the uh, toolbar here. Um, 
And then I also have the front end. And I can go through when I'm making changes uh, after I hit reset, refresh, reload, um, I can see how it's looking, okay? All right, the next is um, updates. So the toolbar uh, gives you a couple of kind of uh, shortcuts to, uh, to things. So I kind of left this uh, to show you that what an update would, would be like. And we're gonna do look at that a little bit closer because there's a couple different places that are gonna take you. So if I click on that, it's gonna take you to this page, okay? You'll also see that the page is over here too in the man, main navigation. So you will see uh, some a red dot and you can see that the update has to do with a plugin, okay? But this is nice because it's a whole update page. So it's gonna tell you what your version is, uh, when it last checked for that version. If I, if I didn't have this version, it would tell me to install it now right here. Um, here is where the plugins are. So the, all your plugins will be listed. And then your themes too. If your theme has an update, it'll be listed here. So that's nice that it's kind of all in one place. You can do it step by step. So if you have a number of plugins, always do one at a time and then kind of make sure you go to the front end, uh, refresh your page and double check all your pages to make sure that um, something's not right. So like if your page is using a, um, a form, um, and there's an update on that form, make sure that the form didn't affect your form, okay? The next thing is comments. Uh, so if you are blogging on your site and you've turned on the option to have people comment on your blog, then you would get a notification of how many comments are there, okay? So that's pretty simple. The next shortcut is a plus sign with the word new. And so we can do a post, media, page, or add a new user. Uh, and those are four things that you kind of pretty, pretty much do on a regular basis. So it's nice to have that shortcut there. Um, I do have another plugin uh, and that's why that's showing. Some of the plugins will have a, a shortcut up here or it might be down in the toolbar uh, for settings doing your settings and stuff. The last thing is over here, it's the howdy and your your name or whatever name you are using for your display, uh, and then your gravatar. And I'm gonna just open up this howdy user because of the fact that it does have my personal information. So I can't open <laughs> mine up on the screen. Uh, so we're going to open it up on the documentation page because it has a nice graphic. So if I was to click on that up there, you would get your howdy, your name, uh, a button to edit my profile, and then always to log out there. Uh, so that has um, the information for that. Okay. All right, so we've done everything within the top folder. And we're, looks like we're good on questions. We're good on questions. Okay. Um, so underneath the toolbar is two uh, white buttons and one is called the screen options and one is called help. So when we click that open, what that does is it has the different elements that are within this dashboard. So when you first log in, you'll see this welcome to WordPress um, page. And most people will hit the dismiss because it does take up a lot of room and you might not want it. Uh, but it does have a link again to that page right there, okay? So you don't have to go over and hover. Uh, and then it has where you can uh, some shortcuts to add a new page, open the site editor, and to edit your styles. And those are 
just um, shortcuts for that. So when I dismiss that, you'll see when I open up that screen options, that welcome gets unchecked. So if you'd like to see it back up, you can always check the box and then it'll appear back. Now, the other things are your site health, your at glance, activity, quick draft, and WordPress events and news. And these are the things that um, you can um, unclick depending on the circumstance. Uh, if you're working with a client, they don't need to see what's happening in WordPress um, unless they are a techie person and would like to know events and things like that. So you could, you know, very easily just turn it off. Um, a quick draft, it, you know, if you are blogging and you have a title and maybe some notes about something that you want to, this is a great resource to have. Your site health um, activity, what I've posted in the last um, month or so, okay? Any recent comments can be right here. And you can also see at a glance. So depending on who's using this dashboard, you can set up for different people, okay? The help. So this has um, two different menus. So the menu on the left is kind of just uh, some definitions and like an overview of what the dashboard is. So we have an overview, we have the navigation, what is on the left-hand side, um, what does the, you know, what does it do? The layout of using the screen options, the drag and drop to arrange the boxes. So yes, you can also arrange the boxes and close them and stuff like that. So I don't want to see the site health, but I do want to see the activity and the draft. I can move that. I can also close them all to make it a little bit cleaner, such as that. Okay. So uh, the box controls. Uh, and then the last one is uh, what each of those um, screen options, a definition of those. The menu on the right side is kind of um, some of the similar links that we saw when we were over in the icon. Uh, like I said, you'll see those links several times to make it uh, more user-friendly to find things. So we have that documentation on the dashboard. So this kind of just, uh, it's a more in-depth um, article about the dashboard. But you can also see from where we're at, it's part of the documentation, the support guides, the dashboard and dashboard screen. So this is a specific article about the dashboard screen. Can I pause you for one second? We have a yep. question. Sure. Um, Ed asked that um, he doesn't have the screen option button. Is it specific to a WordPress version? Um, huh. Do you have a different, you, well, you wish you, you, if you, if you're on the WordPress dashboard, depend. I, I would think that it is available. Um, I, um, does anyone know that there's an, a toggle or something to turn that off altogether? I don't know. The only thing I can think of is if it's a particular theme that you've downloaded that's taken that away. Is it a site that somebody else built for you? Yeah, because it's it's right. on most WordPress. Right. And are you the administrator of the site, Ed? Thank you, Sally. Yes. Uh, no, you built it yourself. I see the help, but not the screen options. Okay. Huh. Okay. Don't know about that one. Um, I, I will make a note about that. Yeah. Hmm. I'll, I'll poke around while you, you move through your presentation, Laura. Okay. 
Yep. And is your version, and you're up to date on your on all your versions, right? You're up to 6.4.3. That's the only thing I can think of. All right. I will ask my, yep, okay. So yeah, we'll make a note of that and I will ask um, people who uh, work on the dashboard. <laughs> Thank you, Ed, for appreciate that. Um, if I always, if I have a question that I can't answer, I always put the answer into the meetup uh, comments uh, if I if I find an answer for it. So, all right. So we are in the help. Okay. So we have documentation on the dashboard. Again, uh, support and forums. Support. Go there. Uh, and then again, uh, this is a different version of, this is the actual documentation that was uh, put out on January 20th, 30th about the specific version 6.4.3. So, um, and then there's links to the different information and then the summary and stuff like that. So that's the actual documentation for that specific release as opposed to that other fancier one that was just kind of from 6.4 and we they just added uh, the different versions to that. Uh, so yeah, so we have both of those things and we're gonna move on. Sound good? Awesome. Yeah, and please, you know, if you have a question or you need me to relook at something, I'm happy to do that. So, um, like I said, the other thing within when you click on the dashboard between the home is that um, is the updates. So if we go into the updates uh, and then we can scroll down, I can click on select all and then just update the plugin. Um, since I only have one, I can do a select all. Um, like I said previously, please do one at a time uh, because then if there is an issue that pops up, you'll know which plugin got aff was affected, affected it so that you can troubleshoot a little bit better than if you clicked all and clicked them all at one time. All right. All right. So our next section is the post media pages and comments. And this this and appearance is pretty much where you'll do all your, your work and stuff. So um, the post, if you hover over, will have a all post, add new post, categories, and tags, right? When you click on it, those categories will appear underneath it. So your navigation will get a little bit um, bigger in that instance. Okay. So we have our list of our different posts, okay? And you have where you can edit the page. You can do a quick edit. You can trash it or you can view it on the front end, okay? And then we have our author and categories. You can go to either add new page within the post here, or you can do an add new page over here. Now, the other thing to point out too is that you have how many pages all together and how many pages published. So if you have some that are in draft, you'll have a notification here too of that it's only in draft. The add new post will actually take you to starting the post itself, which is nice. And then categories. So this was something that I'm still learning about, but um, it's, it's really good for SEO. And if you have a search bar on your, so like my, um, my bakery, if I need to add like a search because it's going to have like different recipes. So then if somebody comes to my page, I want them to be able to find the recipe they're looking for. So having a category. So if they need ideas for uh, cakes, so then they could type in the search cakes. So that would be a category. Um, muffins yeah. and pastries. Those would be my categories, okay? So what we can do is in this area, we can start creating 
are different categories. So we have cake, and then the slug will be cake. Now, if the slug was uh, frosted cakes, then I would do it like this and have a frosted cake, okay? But we're just gonna keep it simple for right now and we're gonna um, add the category. So our category is there. So then when we're doing our post, so then when I go over here, I can do a quick edit. And now I have within my categories, I can click cake and do an uncategorize. Okay. Uh, and then the tag is kind of like, um, like subcategories for right now, but there is the thing that says categories can be selectively converted to categories um, if you need to. So like my tag would be um, like frosted, <laughs> frosted cake. Um, it could be, um, Let's see, um, oh, pound cake, right? Like a pound cake, there's different pound cake recipes. So, so um, and then like birthday, and I can just use the word birthday too, instead of just putting put birthday cake, so. Um, but those are the things that, you, you know, if you are doing a blog post and stuff to uh, research this and to see, what's best and your post can have a bunch of different tags. So you can, uh, you know, do baking could be another one um, so that I have different tags because if people are doing a search like a Google search, then um, you, it'll pop up and stuff like that. Can I pause you for a second? Yeah, I was just uh, seeing that there was a bunch of chatter. So, um, <laughs> yes. So, um, uh, is it Sean um, <clears throat> shared a response saying that it may be the level of your account. Oh, this is going back to his question about the screen option. So, Sean, um, I think I pronounced that right. Um, apologies oh, yeah. if not. Um, it's it, it could be the account level. Um, so, that may be a distinction. And then Ed also gave a quick update. He said that if you click on settings, then the screen option goes away, at least for his view. And then if he clicks on a dashboard, home, it comes back again. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sean. I got it right. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for, um, for figuring that all out. Appreciate that. Um, all right. So. Next we have media. And so the media is all of our um, images, audio, video, documentation, spreadsheets, uh, things like that, that you want to add. Now, just a um, FYI from what I've, people that told me, it's better to do a link for a video because a video will take up a lot of space within your, your database. Um, so you know, like set up a YouTube channel and do the link. Uh, or do just a shorter if it's a longer one. Um, you don't want to bulk up and always optimize your images and stuff like that. Am I making you hungry with all these desserts? <laughs> Very much. I need a snack. Uh, so there's two different uh, ways that you can look at your images depending on how you, you like it um, and things like that. You can also have... Uh, look at when you uh, put them in. So there's different months. Uh, and then there's an option to add a new media file and up here, add a new media file. So pretty easy on that aspect of it. Pages, we have all pages and add new pages. So this is kind of, you know, the wireframe, the, the basis of your website. So you're gonna have a home page about um, I did a workshop on the group block, so I have a page for that, uh, a privacy policy. And this is where you, you know, you're going to create that basic page. Uh, and then here is the actual version of the comments. Like I said, we have the shortcut up here. 
but uh, we also have it listed here. So you can kind of go through and you have the options of uh, approving the comment, clicking spam if it's a spam. So, uh, you know, there's different things to learn about if you are uh, having that comments turned on. All right, any questions for within that section? Looks like we're good. All right, our next section is the appearance, plugins, and users. So our appearance will take care of the themes. And let me bring this back out a little bit. Oops. There we go. Sorry, I was trying to minimize it and it got it kind of got stuck. There we go. So when you uh, first log into a, a brand new dashboard and uh, I'm, I'm using local, which is uh, an app that I can um, uh, open up and um, it opens up on my computer. So it's not a live site. Uh, if for some reason you can't, a lot of people can't use local, WordPress does have the WordPress Playground, which I should have used on Tuesday. Uh, they've been working on this for the last uh, year or so. And what this does is it's a, uh, a kind of a test site so that you could test a plugin, you could you know try out new, new features uh, without harming your, uh, your live site. So it gives you all the same functions as, as the dashboard um, that I'm on right now. So just wanted to point that out to you if you would like to uh, use that. It's a pretty cool feature. And let me get back to my dashboard. All right, so we're in appearance and we have themes. So uh, when you open up, uh, the default is 2024, and it also comes with the last two default themes. Uh, now you can also go in and add a new theme. So if we click on here, there are over 6,000 themes. So uh, I would highly recommend using the feature filter if there's something, if you're a blogger or if you want to do like uh, recipes or, you know, like food and drink, entertainment. Uh, Narrow, narrow it down first <laughs> before you start scrolling and then you're down the rabbit hole and, you know, three hours later, you still haven't found a, a theme because uh, there's a lot. But um, once you do decide on a theme, um, I highly recommend that you then delete the ones that you're not using because they're just taking up space, right? Um, and file space. You don't want that because then it slows down your website when you are doing that. So all right, uh, so that's pretty easy. The other thing is the editor under appearance. So I'm not gonna go into depth on this. We do have a, a bunch of great videos and tutorials that will take you into the different parts of it, go into designing a whole page. Um, so those are out there for you to do, but this is just the link that will take you to that site editor. Okay. We do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, John asked, uh, from the dashboard and the block theme, not classic, how do you access the custom CSS file? Um, okay, so if I'm going into a page, let me see if I remember this. And oh, I got to click on a block. Okay. In the advanced. Okay. So, yeah, you have to click on the actual block. Okay, so I'm doing the um, the cover block. 
and then you scroll on the left. You, you click here next to um, for settings and make sure that you're clicked on the block. So we have cover and then scroll down to uh, advanced and open that up. And then you have additional CSS right here for that particular block. There's a couple of different places to put it in. Um, I know that um, other people might want to have all their CSS together. So that's a whole different uh, workshop <laughs> uh, to look at for the future. But um, great suggestion on learning about that. So there's another question. I'm going to continue. Uh, so then we have plugins and we have installed plugins and we have add new. Um, so this is where you would, you know, go into the plugin page and search for what you're looking for. Like if you want a, a form, um, you have different versions of things like that to um, go through and always, you know, read the reviews and look to see when it was last updated. Those are my two kind of key things to look at, like how many people are using it, um, the reviews, what kind of problems did they have, and when's the last time it was updated. Uh, so um, like this one was five hours ago. <laughs> um, and um, so plugins, and then uh, our users. So we have um, the all users and oops, I thought there was um, oh, here's the image, oh, sorry. So this will take you to the all users. There'll be a list of the, the different users. Uh, their, their username, their name, their emails, and what their roles are. So you can give them different roles. Um, and those roles will then have different abilities within the dashboard. So you could have an author that can't open up the editor. Um, they could only open up like a post because then they would be doing like the blogging or something. Uh, a subscriber is somebody who like, if you are getting people to subscribe to your, um, your, your site so that in order for them to comment. So a lot of people will have that extra step for people to comment that they have to be, they have to log in for first kind of thing. So you can have different um, users within that. Okay. Um, and then add new user. So th uh, this is where you would need the, a username for them, an email, uh, and then you're generating uh, the first password, you know, for them. And then here's their role, uh, the different roles that you can have. Okay. We have a bit of a continuation on the CSS conversation in the uh, okay, chat. Cool. Yeah. So um, it, continuation on that is um, Sally suggested that perhaps a plugin like Code Snippets mm -hmm. um, is an option. Yep. Uh huh. And then Ed also suggested um, perhaps it's under the appearance and customization. Um, there is an additional CSS. Yep. Yes. And that yeah, so that it, mm -hmm. yeah, it depends on what the what kind of theme you have because yeah, it uh, the customizer does have uh, an additional CSS panel that you can add. But um, yeah, I've I've used the code snippet uh, plugin. Yeah. Uh, so you know, there's a there's a bunch of different ones that will give you a plugin. So like I said, I'll all your CSS is within there. 
but you just have to be careful with adding too much uh, to that because then it, it might mess it up too. But um, like somebody pointed out, you know, you're using, a, a, if you use a child theme too, uh, there's a different version, you know, different things within that. So um, a little bit of homework that you need to, to do for those areas. Where was it? Um, we had a note about, where was it? Um, yeah, the classic uh, editor has a widget and the customizer that you, that are in the doc. And there's also links within the documentation. The block-based widgets, uh, block-based themes uh, were introduced in 5.8. So that has the block-based widgets editor which is a kind of a, a different thing. So they kind of, you know, we're slowly pulling away from using a, the customizer and things like that. So. Thank you, Sally. I appreciate all your advice, all your input. All right. Um, and then the last one, uh, the last thing was the, um, whoops, way too big, um, is the um, the profile. So if you click on the profile, you'll get this page. And you can get this either from when you click on the Howdy um, and edit your profile or from when you click on user and your profile. So this will, um, make this a little bit bigger. Um, you can pick out your different colors. And remember, this is the admin color scheme. So this isn't for all the users uh, within that. Uh, and then just the information about you. Uh, Gravatar, there's a link. If you don't know how to set up a, a Gravatar, uh, that's the image that's going to show up in that little space. It's connected to your email. So uh, you're going to do that. So documentation about how to set all that up is there. Just clean all that up. All right, so we're on to uh, tools. We got about eight minutes left. All right, so um, we have tools, available tools. We have the import and export. So you can uh, import different things. If you are switching um, from a, a different website and you need to import information, you can also export. So if you want to export those to a different website, um, a more detailed site health. So on the dashboard, we had that uh, we had the little site health. So this kind of gives a little bit more in depth um, and some suggestions. Uh, if you do have a managed uh, hosting, though, like I, my hosting, uh, they take care of certain things. So there's some, uh, there's always some site health red flags that are here. But it's be, and I've I actually was worried when I first started, and I had e emailed them and said, hey, like my site's not healthy. Like they're like, no, that's okay. It's just that you know they have certain things that are turned on on their end. And so it doesn't, it um, affects my site health on my end kind of thing. Uh, and then there's uh, export personal information and erase personal information. I'm not too sure about these two things. So definitely, you know, like go into the documentation and there is a whole section about that. Um, uh, I, I believe, I'm assuming don't quote me that it's about when you do have people as subscribers and stuff that you need to erase their doc, their personal information, or if you need to um, make a spreadsheet in order to move it to a different location, you're exporting that personal information on that user. Uh, but it goes into more detail within the documentation, which is nice. 
the theme file editor. So when you pop on this, you will get this warning every time. So uh, if you are not comfortable, always, always make a backup <laughs> before going here. Um, but don't be scared of going in here because, uh, and especially if you've you've made a, a child thing, if you need to tweak more than your themes CSS, you might want to try making a child theme. So a child theme is just a layer on top of the main theme. And it's a place where like, if you're gonna make a lot more um, changes to the, the, par the parent, they call it the parent site, um, you'd want to make a child theme. So like if I, I could make the, the child theme would be um, the bakery shop. So that would be my child theme. If I decided, you know, that I was making a lot of changes to the 2024 theme, which I could still use, but then I could create a child theme. And we have, again, we have documentation on that um, to step, step-by-step step instructions on how to set that all up. Um, so uh, just to, to realize that you understand that this is all of your, you know, these are your files that <laughs> if you mess them up, you're in trouble, um, which I, and especially when you start put inputting code, um, learn this the hard way that um, I went in and wanted to see something on the front end and I changed something and then I went back and spelled the word wrong. So the word was spelled wrong. And then I went to my front end and it was like my whole site was messed up because of the fact that the word was spelled. So there was a break in the code. Yeah. <laughs> So I had a day of troubleshooting on that, but it was my own site and that's the place to do it, right? On your site or on a test site so that you can learn how to do troubleshooting, right? It should be part of your job. So the plugins also have the same thing. Um, so uh, each of your plugins is gonna have that. So this is, like I said, I have two different plugins and there's, the stuff information for that. All right. And the last section is settings. And close that. Okay. So the settings has a, um, a general, a writing and a reading. So um, I can't go into general because I just, uh, it just had my email on it, um, but I'm going to go into the writing. And um, so if you're doing a different post and uh, in, in mailing and stuff, this would be probably where the um, you, you set this up. Sorry. The reading, uh, I don't understand the writing as much because I don't have a mail like I'm not doing um, mail service and stuff. So this would be if you are interested to do that, uh, to set that all up. Um, so please forgive me on that part. Uh, the reading settings, this is where, uh, since I created a home page, you're gonna have this as a static page. So that's what's gonna show up first. Now, if I just had it as the last, and I reset this, it will go to the default, okay? So that is one thing that if you want to uh, have a home page, you can pick what home page you want as your static page. And that will be the first thing that people see when they visit your site. Oh, I forgot to save it. Right. There we go. Always save, <laughs> look for the blue button at the bottom. Um, discussions. So uh, this is kind of connected with the comments. So here are all the kind of different options and settings that you could have for comments. Uh, so read through those, make sure that you understand them um, and things like that. Media. So um, didn't know that this was here uh, until recently. And this is a nice resource to have, uh, especially if you're working with somebody who might be working with um, 
a graphic designer and you need to kind of tell them how many pixels each of the different sizes are, uh, depending on what part of the page you're in. So uh, this is a nice resource to uh, kind of share with them the different sizes, or if you wanna make your sizes different, you can um, adjust them here. Permalinks. So permalinks has to do, especially with post, um, is how you want people to be able to find it. So um, right now I just have a basic uh, post name, but if you have multiple authors, you might want to do a custom structure where you have the author's name, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the title, the year maybe, you might want to have a, a, the year too. So um, with that. Uh, last is privacy, um, just a, a quick little overview of that. Uh, and then, like I said, sometimes your plugins will have a, uh, a settings for that. So that would be in, in there. And we are out of time. Our last thing is the collapse menu. So this is just to close that up to give you a little bit more room and you can open it back up. So kind of learn the icon so you know where everything is. All right. Well, thank you everyone. Uh, any last minute questions? I hope that this was informative. Um, again, the documentation page, I really love. So, you know, take a look at what they're doing there. I'll make it smaller. Uh, the other fun thing too is uh, your blo the blocks. So if you are looking at um, all the different blocks, if we go into the customizer, it breaks it down. There's your block editor ones, default themes are all listed, design blocks. I really like this page too. Um, the different media blocks, the text blocks, and it breaks it down into what they do. Um, classic block. Um, so I hope that I've given you a bunch of great resources to help you on your WordPress journey. Um, again, uh, you can find us at learn.wordpress.org.